Hello and welcome to the 82nd video in this series program of Chess Engine in C. So in this video we're going to do the last video on the evaluation, which is fairly skeleton as it is, but before we do that I ran, you remember at the end of the first evaluation implementation where we just had the p-square tables implemented like so, you remember that Vice played against TSCP for 20 games using set start positions from the Nun suite and Nun suite being from Grandmaster John Nun, uh, and it lost 13-7, which actually positively surprised me that it didn't lose 20-0, and that was purely with p-square tables. The last videos we've put together this pawn structures with the pass pawn isolated, and then the rook and queens on open and semi-open files, and implemented those. And I ran the tournament again, and to my surprise, Vice won it 12.5 to 7.5, as you can see here. And in fact, went on an enormous winning streak just halfway through the tournament, winning seven games in a row. So it's actually really surprised me because TSCP, although a simple engine, it's got an almost identical search to Vice, and indeed they were hitting basically the same depth. And TSCP, though, has more evaluation features, particularly it has king safety evaluation and also the fact that in the end game the king moves into the centre of the board. And this actually cost Vice probably another three points in this, is the fact that it kept its king in the corner going into an end game and ended up getting crushed. So I want to deal with that in this final video. And one more thing I want to deal with, I can't find the game right now, I can't remember which one it is in the tournament, but there was one in the tournament where Vice didn't know that a king and a knight versus a king is a draw. TSCP doesn't know that either. But it caused Vice to play for what it thought was an advantage, when in fact it would have been better giving the knight away and keeping a pawn to promote the pawn to win the game. So I want to put those two issues, one with the king position, the other one with the recognising drawn material situations to bed in this this video. So the first thing we're going to do, and I've prepared the code because it's fairly simple stuff, is we're going to add in a function here that I've called material draw. And it looks big and evil, but it's not. And it's based on the code from an engine called Scheng, which you can by Giancarlo Pachotta, which you can look at uh, it's called Cheng. If you put that into Google, you can find the code, I think, for version 11.2, and it's based on a function in there. And basically what it's saying is if we don't have any rooks in the position, and we don't have any bishops, and we have less than three knights, then it's a material draw. You can hold for draw. Remember, this is slightly different to what we have in the X board, where it takes into account that you can checkmate with bad play as well. This assumes best play. So it's a different material draw situation function to what we have in the export protocol where we're simply checking whether the position is a dead draw despite what anyone does. But you can read through the different combinations of material situations here to work out whether the position can be held to a draw or not. And this basically allows for situations where the single knight, single bishop, things like this, it will say then that these are a draw. So at least Vice knows what to aim for. And like I said, in the situation in one of the games it had the option of going a couple of pawns versus a king or a knight versus a king and chose the knight versus a king because it didn't know about this situation. Well now that'll be a little bit different. The next thing I want to add in then is now we sort that material draw is simply the code at the start of the eval function to return a draw score if indeed we find a material draw. So we just say if material draw then return zero. The next thing to do is to look at the king, and I've prepared a couple of tables here for the king position as well. And I'm going to put these two at the top here, underneath the rook table. I'm just seeing I'm missing a bracket here. So what this is, this here is the king in the end game. And as you can see, it penalizes heavily the king being in the corners, and this should also here be a minus 20. And so should this. I'll just double check I've got all these correct here. Okay. So basically very heavy penalties for staying in the corners. No score at all for being sort of around on the normal edges and but not in the corners. And then you can see a 20, a 40, and a 50 in the middle. So it's basically encouraging the king in the end game to walk into the middle. Conversely, in the opening with King O, the king is encouraged to castle with the 10 here, king side and not to put the king on f1 and not to put the king on d1 
and when castling queenside to stay around b1 or c1 but there's a lot of discouragement with heavy penalties for walking forwards and indeed it will never really i wouldn't have thought go further than the third rank in the game because there's a minus 70 penalty for going any further and i don't increase the penalties any further here because the assumption is if it decides it needs to go here then it's probably in a strange situation and therefore should be able to walk around the ball as much as it wants but essentially this is trying to keep the king in the opening on the back rank and then walk to the in the end game into the middle of the board so the way we then implement this obviously is exactly the same as we've done with the p square tables in the functions here except we only have one piece because it's one king so this makes things relatively simple to implement the first thing we're going to do is define a macro to actually say what our end game material is and the way that it'll work is we'll say if there are no queens on the board then if the material is less than this then it's an end game so I've said two rooks and four knights so if we have less than that material value on the board then we'll class it as an end game and in fact I'm actually going to add on some pawns here as well because of course we could have lots of pawns on the board so let's say if we've also got eight pawns on the board here that's really just guesswork. We'll say if there are no queens and say there are four pawns each and a couple of knights, a couple of bishops and a couple of rooks then we can safely say that's already an endgame situation and the king can probably come out. And the last thing we need to do is add in this code here which is almost identical to the code for the other pieces except we don't need to do a piece loop because we have one of each piece. So we get the square that the king is on and we say if black queens are zero or the material the black has is less and we'll say let's say less than or equal to our end game material then add on the end game square score otherwise the opening square score and likewise do exactly the same thing for black as well minusing the score or remembering to mirror the square and I'm really sorry but this utterly irritating Windows update keeps flashing up and I can't get rid of it no matter what I do. So once we've done that then we return the score as normal. So this is only a, it's like a small change but from what I've seen of the games that it's played against TSCP this should make a big difference to the way it plays. I'm already quite happy with the balance of the rest of the scores even though it's not very much because it seemed to play relatively well and I don't want to add anything else in but I think it's crucial to add in one the draw recognition and two the king position. So I'll save it, end it there for this video, and what I'll do is I'll let this tournament of 20 games run again with the new situation for Vice. I suppose actually one more thing we could very quickly do is just make this and make sure everything's okay. And then I'll run Mirror again as well by running into Vice console mode and typing Mirror. And yes, it runs through the positions and everything seems to be okay. So I'll leave these, uh, this Vice playing 20 games against TSEP again and let you know in the next video what the result is. In the next video we're going to go back out to the search and we're going to implement the null move forward pruning which will make Vice a lot stronger than TSCP because it's going to win one or two depths every search through this and then we're going to try and win another couple of depths by implementing a transposition table which will make Vice beat TSCP probably due to search depth alone 20-0 and we'll probably move on and put it against a stronger engine and see try and estimate what kind of rating vice has achieved then so thanks very much for watching comments questions criticisms welcome as always on youtube